Alrighty. Let's do this. Let me do one last thing real quick. We'll see how this goes. Who knows? Could be a disaster. Could be one of the more interesting streams I've ever done. You never know. And... Uh, I'll also post this one to YouTube as well. Okay, let me turn down my volume so that way. Oh. That way you guys don't hear my ringtone or whatever. You guys don't need to hear that going off constantly. Okay, copy that. Do -do -do -do. Okay, that's going there. Perfect. And let's make a community post, spread the word. I feel like some people might be interested in making instruments. Let's see here. But yeah, we got a couple instruments to work on today. Uh, I got a banjo that I got to do. Got a, a banjo. I have two fiddles I can work on and a guitar top. Oh, well, it's actually it's a five string bass, but they're pretty similar. They look the same. Okay, do, 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 do. Um, let me also, before we do this, make sure that everything should be going. I had to move my keyboard out of the way so I don't really have access to typing or anything. Um, so I'm trying to do like post everything off my phone. Okay, then we'll go back to here. And give that a second to load. But yeah, we got a couple instruments today. Like I said, two fiddles, a banjo that I'm building from scratch, and a guitar top that I gotta fix. So, that'll be fun, I think. here uh, looking forward to this ah welcome pioneer robot it should be fun i'm looking forward to it too and it's been a while since i've done i keep looking up where the camera instinctively is usually is but it's not there today but yeah i'm looking forward to it too it's been a while since i've worked on the instruments so it'll be good to get back into it Mr. Stick, yes. My face cam fill in. Yep. Now, since I have the face cam currently pointed at my desk, so you guys can see what I'm working on, I can't. You guys can't see what my face looks like. But you already know what my face looks like, so no need to see that anymore. I think that's set up there. Before we start, I do want to show you guys a video that I saw years ago, but I still think is funny. Yeah. Like I said, working a lot. What I hope to get done today. Um, I have two base bars that I gotta fit. Well, one base bar that I know I have to fit, one violin top that I'm still thinning out a banjo rim that I have to level, and a guitar top that I have to put an edge back on. So nothing tons, nothing massive. Well, I guess the bass bar is kind of massive. Bass bar on a bass on a violin, actually. All right, but before we get going, I want to show off this video here. Um, just ignore this idol. You don't, you don't need to see that. 
But this video, I don't know if you can read it. It's How to Read Sheet Music by Julian Cianciolo. Cianciolo, I don't know how you pronounce that. But I saw this video a long time ago, and it still rings true today. So thinking of music and stuff, it's rather fitting. How to Read Sheet Music by a 12-year-old. By someone not qualified to talk about sheet music. Let's start with the staff. This is a staff. This symbol at the beginning tells you which clef to play. There are two main clefs, the low one and the high one. There are also some more obscure clefs that you'll never be told about. The two main clefs, treble and bass, are connected by a middle note we call C. You'll find that a lot of music stuff is based around C, except tuning that's based around A. Unless you play in a band and it's based on the note right above A. That is assuming you play an instrument that calls notes what they actually are. Instruments that call notes what they actually are include these while instruments that don't call notes what they actually are include these. Notes are found on the lines and spaces of the staff. They all sound different. You can put them together to sound nice. This is a whole note. Sometimes it gets four beats, sometimes it doesn't. This is a half note. It gets half the length of the whole note. A quarter note gets half the length of that, while an eighth note gets half the length of that. This pattern continues on for a bit, so you can make notes as short as you please. For example, the 256th note, or demi semi hemi demi semi quaver. You'll find that information very useful. Now that you know the notes and rhythms, it's time to move on to the important stuff and figure out what all these symbols mean. So let's just go through them. This reminds you when to breathe in case you forget to breathe. Stop playing, contemplate, and continue playing. This is easy, this is not. Counting to five has never been more difficult. You were never informed of this. Meh. Be soft. Softer. Don't even bother. Meh. Be loud. Louder. Don't even bother. Play loud, and then don't. Play loud, and then don't. If you're reading this, it's already too late. So you go back when, no wait. This is only fun when playing trombone and is also the only fun thing about playing trombone. You should probably stop staring at the paper. Like a solo, but everyone gets credit. You're unimportant. You're very unimportant. At least you're playing. You thought it was over. Someone's playing the wrong note. Just stop. I hope you're all taking notes, cause that'll be on the test. The guy's like, he is hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway. That was the intro to today. But today we are working on some instruments. So I'm going to be playing music off my sound deck. I'm going to be repairing stuff. All bunch of stuff going on. But anyway, um, let's see here. Make sure you have chance. Turn that off. There you go. But yeah. This is, I guess, a bit of an overview of what's going on. All the stuff that I'm going to be using, plus probably some stuff I forgot to pull out. So, I'll walk you through the tools real quick. So, of course, we have our files over here. Um, this one's actually a rasp here. This one is a file. Uh, the files all have funny names, but we won't go over that. A couple chisels, a scraper, a utility knife. It's good for marking stuff. It's uh, a couple of rulers, good block plane, a caliper here, cool desktop, not a computer desk. It is, it is my computer desk. That's why my keyboards are right there. But I had to move it out of the way for today's stream. Couple, couple extra files, diamond files, and my glue over here. I use hot glue or hide glue actually. It works really well for me, so that's why I use it. And it's really good for instrument repairing too. So let me start real quick. We'll do the guitar top first. Ah. Kick. All right. So this is the guitar top that I'm working on. Normally you're used to seeing this side of the thing here. Um, let me see if I can get the shot here. So yeah, normally, you know, like not a desktop on your computer screen. No, this is my the top of my desk, not my desktop. So yeah, normally you're used to seeing the outside. Ignore the glue squeeze out. I did not clean that up, my bad. But normally you're used to seeing this side, but we probably did not actually realize was just what was going on inside the thing here. So yeah. 
Here's the sound hole that you saw earlier, but right over here is where the bridge actually sits. So this supports the bridge. This is your X brace here. There's a whole bunch of different braces inside. Um, I won't go over all of them now because you could, there's, there's a lot there. I could nerd out for the entire stream just on bracing. But for this one here, I when I was actually moving to my place here, I accidentally chipped off the edge here. So if you look, it's supposed to round, go all the way out there. I accidentally broke off the piece. So we gotta fix that. But I still have the piece with me. So let me clean off all these fuzzies, cat hair and stuff. And thankfully, since it was mostly a clean break, I should be able to just stick it back on easily. Let me try and um, <laughs> nerd out, nerd away. I probably will a lot this stream. Okay, let me get the high glue here. So the nice thing about high glue is that it, well, okay, I made this one a little thick. I need to add some water to it. Let me be right back. Still, it's first time cooking it, so it's a little bit off. Um, actually, got a little bit of water right here. So, but high glue actually comes as dry granules, and you have to mix in your own water and heat it up. That's why it's called hot glue also. What's the white container do? It is my heating, how I heat it. It is, full disclosure, it is actually a baby bottle warmer that I jerry-rigged a variable switch to, like a fan switch or whatever, to give me changing in temperature. But, yeah, this keeps my high glue warm, so that way I can use it, heat it up whenever I need it. Um, it's not the greatest right now. I probably should have let it heat some more, but it should be okay for at least this patch, and then I'll let it keep heating. Dimmer switch, yeah. Rigged up a dimmer switch to it. Okay. Normally for high glue, I like to cook it once, let it settle, and then it's ready to use. But, you know, we're, we just we play by our own rules today. So because this was a clean break here. So repairing this, it's not, eh, it's not the greatest break in the world. It's not... I can get it to sit back where it's supposed to, but... It's not a great patch because a little bit of the wood is frayed right up here. So it's not going to look perfect. But it should at least hold and then I can work on it later. So just got to dab a little bit on. Don't have to worry about being too clean with this. High glue is clear when it dries and it's clear under finishes. So if I finish over the top of it, you'll never know the high glue is there. Okay, so we'll squeeze that in. And the other nice thing about high glue is that it will clamp itself. So let's hold it here for a second. As high glue dries and cools, it contracts. Can I smooth out the frayed part? Um, not really. It's missing wood, which is why I mentioned it. So it's not going to look perfect. Since it's right on the edge, I might be okay because... Normally, I make my guitar tops a little bit oversized, and then I route them down as needed. Okay, hold this here for a little bit longer. But yeah, high glue, as it dries, it cools and contracts. So as it contracts, it pulls the pieces together and clamps it for you. So you just have to let it dry enough that it clamps itself, and then it just does the rest of the work for you. For more essential, see, like, look at that. I can already take my hands off. It's holding itself right now. If I were to put any pressure on it, it would come away, but it is held. So that will is fixed for the moment. I'm going to have to let the glue cure some more before I fiddle with it. I'm going to put a patch on the underside as well to help support it, but it's in a non-essential area, so I'm not terribly worried about it. Okay, let me move this out of the way. And we'll get going to the next instrument. I'm envisioning. Get going to the next instrument, which I'm thinking will probably take the longest. Let me grab it here.
All right, let me clear some of these tools off my desk. And I shall show you what I got on my lap. Death Row to Canada music works so well in so many areas. Okay. And we'll move the files. I don't want to scratch up the finish at all. Keep it safe. Let me close up my glue too. I'll need to add more water to that, but I'll get around to that later. Let me grab a towel too to put down the under the violin. glue too but let me put down a towel to keep the finish safe on the fiddle I also got super glue too super glue is a very handy glue it's not great for woodworking but it's handy for quick stuff okay we'll add a little bit more water to my glue let that cook down a little bit and stir this in yeah, high glue. I really like it because it's water soluble. So if you get it on anything, you can get flood the whatever. Like if I spill it on my shirt, I can flood my shirt with water and it gets all the glue out, which I am kind of clumsy. We are back already. Um, it also separates very easily. So if I make a mistake or something, I can just heat the surface up and it separates itself or it's also susceptible to cracks and not cracks, but it separates very cleanly if there's pressure put in a sharp line against it. I don't know how to quite explain it, but if you try and slip a spatula into a glue joint for high glue, it'll pop right apart. Which is really handy when fixing braces. But yeah. The next one that I'm working on is this fiddle right here. This is, I don't remember who made this fiddle. I think, I don't remember if it was a cottage instrument. I know it says cop, okay, it's a Czechoslovakian instrument there. Try and get some of the dust off so you can read the label. Here you go. Um, it's backwards, unfortunately, but yeah, it is a copy of a Stradivarius made in Czechoslovakia. It's not a terribly high dollar instrument, so it's good to learn on, but I'm gonna be trying to fix it. So what I'm working on is the top here. The top had an integral base bar, which means that there was, um, let me see, wait, I don't have a, shoot, I don't have a top ready, but. Normally on violins, on the inside here, you can see this thin, the light strip here of wood. Normally there is a piece of wood glued here that is the base bar of your fiddle. That, when you put tension on it, spreads out the pressure of the bridge, which normally sits right here, one of the legs. Yeah, the bridge normally sits right about here. It spreads out the pressure of one of the legs across the entire top and helps it to vibrate. Um, but you normally want two pieces, so the top and then the wood glued to it. If it's one piece like this, that this was, where they just left excess wood in the shape of a base bar, it doesn't vibrate as well. Wait, late, but here, I welcome Nintendo Freak. So yeah, we are working on replacing the base bar to this violin. This had a one piece one, so I had to carve that all away, and I'm now going to be replacing it with a piece of wood I cut out earlier. So let me slip this down here. And... Pull up my dimensions. Let me grab my base bar stock over here. Which I cut earlier. We got some... I think this... I forget, I think this is Douglas fir. I don't think it's spruce, but it should be okay. See that or cedar is what I got. 
be good practice. So I need to actually trim down the base bar before we add it. Let's just replicate what was there. So let's flip this over. And nice, thanks. So I need to cut it right about here. Mark it with my thumbnail. It's one of the nice things of having a longer thumbnails as a woodworker, you can mark stuff easily. Okay. Let me. There's that. Let me get the violin out of the way, then I'll cut the wood, and then we can start shaping the base bar. So the base bar, when I cut it out of its stock, I left it very tall. It's normally not supposed to be this tall. It's only supposed to be 15 millimeters tall, which let me show you guys. Might be a bit of a nerd this entire stream, but it's normally only supposed to be that three subbed Ah, Thanks. I appreciate it. Uh, should have popped up. I have it set to pop up. I don't know why it's not. So yeah, normally the base bar is only supposed to be that tall. So we have quite a bit of wood to remove. So let me grab my saw. Need another bench off the left here. And we shall cut this down. And let me see if I can find that mark that I made with my thumb. Uh, where did that go? Well, I'll click for measure. Uh, grab the top back off here. Set that down. This is why you always have a pencil handy and never a pen, actually. Don't use pens in woodworking. It is not, well, it is kind of bad if you use a pen in woodworking, just because pens are much harder to cover up later whenever you, like, as you're working or whatever. Okay. Sharpen my pencil real quick. I normally really like mechanical pencils for woodworking just because they give you a very sharp line, which is a lot easier to see and work with. Regular pencils are okay. I mean, they make a mark, but they easily... I see my mark now. Regular pencils make a much thicker line. Okay, let me put the fiddle top down here. And... We'll use this as a discount square. Okay, line that up. So I'll just clamp the wood in between the jaws. That holds it pretty square. I don't need it terribly square just because I'm gonna be cutting it and trimming it anyway. Okay, so I've got my scrap wood here. This is just to protect the top of my desk. So that's all that's for. Who knows, you might actually get a little ASMR this time. Not that I'm going for it. Yeah. Wrap it up a little bit so that way you can get more of an angled cut into it. And... This is a bit denser of a wood, which... I'm not as big a fan of. For instruments in particular, you want thinner, or not thinner, you want lighter wood that's very strong. So for instance, um, Sitka spruce, all the spruce woods are very good for instruments because they're not only light, like when you pick it up, they're not very dense, but they're also incredibly tough. So as you're working with them, like, they will take weight, whatever weight you put on the top of the instrument, but they also are light enough that any vibrations you put in through the strings will vibrate the entire top. So they're very handy in that regard. Okay. 
Just making sure I got the right piece. I forgot to mark which side was the scrap. And let me grab my block plane. We'll plane one of the edges and then I'll line it up and start clearing it off. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, that's about set right. It's been a while since I sharpened my block plane, so it's not the best right now. Okay, we're getting there. I don't need a great edge on this. I just need something. I'm also going to... Let's use my chisel for this. Because the violin top is bowed in the... i try and get my hand in the shot. Because it's bowed on the inside... I'm going to try rounding this edge here a little bit so that way when I go to line it up, I at least have a starting radius to work from so I don't have as much material to remove later. I don't need to do tons because it's not a big radius, but it is some. Yeah. It at least makes my life easier later. And we're starting to round it. I'll probably come at it with my block plane. Just, yeah, we'll do leave the block plane on it right at the end here. Make it a little bit faster. Okay. And that should be smooth that rounding a little bit. Okay. So it's hard to see, but we rounded this edge just a little bit. Got around the other side, and then I can start fitting it. Fitting it does take some time, especially since I'm not the best at it yet. I mainly work on guitars and stuff, so violins and stuff are a little outside my wheelhouse, but I've done them before. I've built some, so I'm not a stranger to them. Okay. Actually gotta go uphill, which is a really weird feeling. Normally wood, um, let's see if I have a good way to screw it. I don't have any straws on me, but wood here, I can actually show you with this here, the grain here. Wood is a lot like a bundle of straws. So each, like all the wood fibers is essentially straw lined up side by side by side by side. And say you have your wood fibers all going this way. And if you're going to cut them, you want to cut them along the grain fiber so that way every all the fibers will compress into each other. Like if you're cutting it like this, it'll push all the wood fibers that way. If you try coming from this end down, as you try and cut it, it's gonna peel them away and split it and be nasty and stuff. So normally you cut, always cut downhill with wood, but I guess we got some really weird grain going on in this piece, so I had to cut uphill. Okay. I'm gonna have to vacuum my room today. Let's move everything out of the way so I don't mark up the whatever. All right, that's enough of the house music from Link's Awakening. Uh, what else do we got? I'm trying to think of other music that I have that's fun to play. Okay. Um, uh, we'll just fold this in half. So here's the violin top again. I'm, since we already have the top, we already have the old base bar marked out where the old one was, I can just follow that so I don't need to worry about like re actually lining it up. Well, I guess I could verify it here. Let's do that real quick. Grab my soft ruler here, a flexible ruler. And... Inside bridge foot of one and a half, so the bridge foot, okay, we'll mark it off with that, comes in right off that point. What are you, 2.9 to the very edge of where it marks normally, so we got to, again, we'll transfer that measurement to the inside, line it up our ruler. Okay, that looks about right. So, base bar is in a good spot. Plus, I can't exactly take it too far to the edge because as I'm 
here. Let me see if I can show you guys. As you're gluing it, if you try and take it too far out, it's going to start covering that hole up there. So when you look through that, you can actually see the wood start covering up the hole, and that's bad. The technical t that's the technical term right there is bad. Okay, and let me set up my pencil to mark it. I think there's better ways of doing this, but I found this is the easiest for me. Okay. Take our little pencil stub here. And let me line the base bar back up. We'll also mark this as top here. So that way... <laughs> the other important thing in word working is to make sure you have the everything marked out where it's supposed to. Yeah, I'm going to grab a drink real quick. So, and we'll also make this outside here. So outside and top, so I know exactly where everything is. Knock some of that graphite dust out. We'll use that later. But yeah, easiest way I found is line up the base bar right where it's supposed to go. Then you take your pencil, and then you can mark out... And I can't exactly see it. This is really weird angle to film. But you essentially keep your pencil flat on the top. And you can use that to essentially carve, not carve, but scribe a line into the wood of the exact contour of the top. It's really handy. It at least gets me really close to where I'm supposed to be. And then you can sand down or scrape down from there get a perfect fit so now we have to carve down to this line so we'll reopen this up we'll keep the fresh side down so I don't scratch the wood at all and where is my little guy I had a little plane here somewhere here it is I'll use this guy this is my little finger plane something like this it's really welcome to woodworking this thing here this tiny little piece of metal Cost you about 60 bucks. And it's got a bit of a rounded bottom to it, so it's not great, but it's good for getting in tight spaces. A lot better than my block plane is. Or my big chisel, but I might. Shoot, the grain here is really weird. Eh, I don't like carving like that. Um. Okay, we'll go this way. Yeah. We'll take it slow. The important thing in woodworking is take it slow. If you try and rush it, that's when you make mistakes. Cute little plane it is. It's a cute little thing. Okay. Um, we gotta take a little bit more right here. I'm also trying to be very careful, because if I were to carve like this... In woodworking... <laughs> You, it's just like cutting vegetables or whatever. You always want to make sure that if the thing were to slip, there's nothing in the way that'll stop it that you don't want to cut. Like if I'm cutting like this and it slips, there's a very good chance it'll hit my hand, so I can't carve like that. I could try holding it like this, maybe. Get a nice flat surface there. Take it slow. Nice wood shavings. And music stops suddenly. That's all right. Okay. I'm just trying to get close to the line. I'm not trying to eat the line yet. That will come later. Okay. Once we start really fitting this, then we'll start taking away from the line itself. I'm just trying to get close to it to give me a good general starting point. Okay. Yeah, smell of wood dust, man. It's so good. Especially good cedar wood. Fresh cut cedar wood is so nice. It's dangerous in high amounts, but it's nice in small doses. And get really slow here. Up 
sweep up right about here. There we go. So yeah, as you can see, we come close to the line. I'm not perfectly at it here. I could take a little bit more material here. I could remove a bit more here, but I'm not terribly worried about getting close because I will perfect the fit here. So let's fold it over again. Okay. And we put this down because we marked it. I know this is the outside and the top. So that way I fit it to the same point every time. And this will go right about here. Okay, there's still a high, quite a high point right in the middle here. So trying to fit it. And we line it right back up. You can see it rocks quite a bit. So we're gonna have to remove that. So we'll mark it from this side. So we got the high point right here marked where we want it normally or not normally, but where we want it to be. Set the top down, unfold our towel and keep carving. It's a very slow process, but very rewarding if you take your time and do it right. We had a lot of material to remove. I'm also going to step back from where I marked it, like come back each side of my mark and come at it more to make it more of a gentle line, like a gentle transition instead of sharp. Okay, let's try that. I'm just going to hold the top in my hands. I don't need to fold it this time. And outside top goes right here. Line you up there. And we got a high point right there. So let's mark you. Mark right where it rocks. And let's see. Got a call this morning saying that they were going to work on my internet or work on the internet lines in my area. And just got a text message. They're going to do that tomorrow. So glad it's not today. And the stream doesn't randomly cut out. Okay. So all I'm essentially doing is just chasing the high point. Wherever it rocks, wherever it stands proud or holds the rest of the wood off of the top, I'm just chasing that point and slowly bringing that down. Until you slowly bring it down until there is like no more high points, everything touches evenly. Okay. Um, we're still rocking in the middle. Okay, I might actually have to divot it quite a bit here. Thankfully, I do have a lot of wood left over. So if I do carve a little bit too deep, I can correct it. I don't want to go too deep, but you never know. Accidents happen. Ooh. Okay, yeah, we don't go that way. You also have to pay attention to the wood and what it's telling you. I'm beginning to sound like Bob Ross, but... As you're carving, you'll feel if the wood does not want to be worked a certain way. Like if I'm trying to carve from this direction here, I started and then flipped around. And that's because it's actually starting to peel it. So the straws that I talked about earlier are, all sl are, are running out a little bit. Instead of being perpendicular to the wood, they're tilted a little bit. They run in like this. So if I try and carve this way, it's going to peel them all and be nasty. So you have to pay attention to the wood and listen to it. Then you'll work the wood better. Unless it's a wood like Purple Heart. Purple Heart just does not want to be worked at all. Screw Purple Heart. Okay. That looks okay there. Then... 
line this up here. Okay, so I've started chasing that high point down. You can kind of see that there. That high point, it was rocking right by that F hole there. Or the hole in the wood. It's called an F hole. But it was rocking there, but we brought it down enough that it's no longer rocking, but it's still touching. So now we're getting really close. So let me set this up right here. Okay. See if I can't scribe this. Okay, you go right there. there make a little mark in the wood so i know where to line it up every time as well at least a little pencil mark in the top then we shall scribe it a little bit more um let's see actually here let me rub that off i don't need that Sounds like a Purple Heart have a history. Yes. The first guitar I ever built was out of Purple Heart. And trying to work those Purple Heart back and sides were awful. The I had a table saw, which could cut it thin, but I had no sharp enough hand tools to do the job. So whenever I try and work it, it would chip, it would peel, it would crack, it would split. Then I have to bend it too. So trying to bend it after it already was a pain to work with just caused even more problems. It was a headache. It's a beautiful wood, but it's nasty. First and only instrument I've ever built out of Purple Heart. Hey, if you guys want, I can actually show you some of the instruments I've built. Okay. Well, scrape these off here just remove the pencil marks and no more since we're starting to get close it's starting to touch in multiple places i'm gonna start going even slower with it so that way i can really see what's touching so it's really purple yes actually let me see if i can well no i can't um let me see if i can pull up a picture on my phone when it is fresh cut it is the purplest wood i have ever seen Um, so let's see if I can find a picture. I know the camera quality recording from a phone to whatever is not going to be great, but it is honestly plum purple. So for instance, it is that color when it is fresh cut. It is like the prettiest wood then you put it underneath a clear finish which holds some of the light it looks so good but sadly it does not stay like that forever <laughs> instruments okay i can do that um have i done this one already i think i have okay let me let me finish with this once i glue it then i can show some instruments um, let me turn up my glue pot a little bit, get that water, try and bring it back to a boil, melt all the glue in there. Okay, so you sit right there. I took a shot. Ah, oh, you quit sports from embarrassment. Yeah, I hate to see it. Okay. Um, go right here. So I kind of need, so all that planning that I did at the beginning, I actually rounded these edges a bit too much. So I have to start bringing down the center of it to get to where I carve these. So that's why you go slow. Um, how am I going to do this? Okay. Don't want to use that. Uh, yeah, we go this direction. And let's just keep 
cutting this. Okay. I feel like Stage Builder is a rather fitting piece of music for this. There we go. And let's see how that's coming along. It's starting to come down. So let me see if I can show you guys here. Try and pin it down so it can sit right. Um, on this side, it's not as good. But over here, we're starting to get it to come down to start sitting decently well. I mean, there's a lot of gaps, so it's not great, but... I could stream some classical music if I run out of a song. True, the hard part about that is classical music is actually copyrighted. So the music itself isn't, but whenever a band plays it, it becomes copyrighted. Which is weird. Not weird, but kind of unfortunate. Okay. And since... Fiddles have... Let me see if I can show you guys. So fiddles are not only curved in this direction, so like from top to bottom it get arches this way, they're also curved in this direction. So when you put the bass bar down, I have to cut this side of it a little bit lower than this, or whichever way. Cut this one a little bit higher, so that way it actually sits right. So I gotta do that too. I have to angle the chisel just slightly. Unfortunately, I don't have any chalk to fit this, so I'm gonna have to use graphite to do the final fitting. And... There we go. So outside there. So now I expect that the outside is going to not fit as well because I just dropped that a little bit, but now the inside should start fitting better. Chalk, copy strikes are no bueno. I agree with that. Chalk, yes. So if you get powderized chalk or if you get a chalk stick and you powderize it yourself, you can use that to help fit wood. Okay. We're getting closer. This side is starting to fit decently well now. Um, this side is getting better, but there's still some gaps, so I need to round everything a little bit more. So we'll angle the chisel a little bit. Make sure to hold the very back of the wood so that if the chisel slips, my hand is nowhere near it. I've done that before. I've scarred my hands many a time from Woodworking is a fun hobby, but also a dangerous one. Okay. How does that work, Chuck? Um, I... Okay. Let me finish this strip here and show you. So... There we go. So, when you're fitting something like this, if you want to get an exact... If you want to know exactly where you're supposed to take off wood, what you can do is rub either this surface down with chalk or right where it's supposed to sit with chalk. Then when you place the wood on, the wood will be touching the wood but through the chalk. And then you just rub it back and forth a little bit. And that'll give you the highest points. It'll show you right on this piece right here where you're supposed to carve away because chalk will come off. It's a really handy trick that gets you perfect matching. Otherwise, you have to kind of guesstimate and hope and pray and stuff. Okay. I unfortunately don't have any, so I'm going to have to use some graphite. Um, let's see. I think I have a pencil around here somewhere. Another one that I can use. Orange. Yeah, we could use some orange. Okay. Let me.
me fold my towel up again. I'll actually use an orange colored pencil here. So what I got to do is powderize this. So we do that by sharpening right above this line here. So scrape off some of this. There we go. Okay. All right, this won't be the best option. Graphite probably would be better, but graphite is also hard to get out of wood. Um, here. So I gotta kind of cover the surface. Thankfully, though, once I do it once, colored pencil isn't graphite, it's wax. Yeah. Actually, nah, colored pencil may not be the best way. If it's wax, no. Let's use this. Yeah, just take my chisel edge here, scratch the edge of the pencil. That drops off graphite shavings, which then I can just sprinkle all along this line here. Okay. So just like that. Yeah, wax won't be a good idea for this now that I think about it, because colored pencil being wax means that it'll actually affect the glue joint, which I don't want to do. Okay. Sprinkle some graphite all along it. Now I will show you what I mean. So take your piece of wood here, line it up exactly where it's supposed to go about there and then you place it down here where it's supposed to go and if you do it right you can just wiggle it gently back and forth because you don't want to move it too much and look at that it tells me exactly where to carve because i now know this is touching right here is touching right here is touching and right over here i can now see exactly where i need to carve so I'll move the top out of the way. Handy trick. So then I just take it, come from the right side again, and just carve away all the spots that have graphite in them. Which is right here too. Right over here. Okay. What are the numbers and letters? This this was actually from the edge of the wood when I bought it. So CBG, I don't know what that means, but it I think it's for like quarter son or not riff son. Um, there's another term for it because quarter son, true quarter son, is hard to get. But there was originally 1.66 board feet for this piece or well, the piece that I cut it off of anyway so yeah that's what that stands for Let me grab a drink real quick realize you guys can see my legs sitting cross-legged here Now we'll grab the top back. I'll fold the thing down again. I'm gonna add more graphite this time because I think part of the results were actually from places that didn't have graphite. So I gotta make sure it's evenly coated the entire way. Just reapply it. Kinda of losing my pencil here. Okay. Let's keep on carving this. Yeah. If you've done this a lot, I've actually heard people can get an entire top done in just a couple hours. I'm nowhere near that, but... What kind of, what is it? Um, Which one, the brace or the top here? It's a bit laggy. It is? Hmm. Uh. Looks like it might be a bit. 
bitrate still says it's good, so everything else says it's good. You may need to refresh. Well, both. Okay. Um, so the top here is spruce. I don't know what kind of spruce, but it is a form of spruce. This base bar here is Douglas fir. Normally you want spruce for this as well. Englewood spruce is good. Italian alpine spruce I've heard is the best for fiddles because it is the lightest. Um, let's set that back down here. And there we go. Wiggle it. Just uh, wiggle it a little bit. And our end goal here is that the entire bit, entire edge here would be covered in graphite. Once it's entirely covered and I don't see any gaps, then we know it's a tight fit and I can glue it. Okay, let's unfold this. So we got some touching right here. Okay, I got it. Eh, yeah, I got to come from the other side. So just peel a little bit away. Don't want to take tons off. Little, little cuts everywhere make a huge difference. I now have two months. Yeah. Uh, welcome for two months. I don't know why that message lagged so long. Cause yeah, you said you resub. I got the notification on my end that you resub a while ago. I don't know why Stream Elements is lagging. Yes, three months is a new badge, so keep your eyes out for that. All right. So we cut away the dark part. Okay, then we put this back down and top outside back on the top and outside. Line it all up again. Right there. Then just to wiggle it. <laughs> like I said, you have to listen to the wood. You do, yes. Wood will talk if you listen. If you know how to listen, you'll, it'll tell you things. Yeah, we're starting to get more dark spots appearing. So it used to be like one tiny bit there, one tiny bit there. We're now getting all of this showing and all of that showing. So it's starting to spread, which is what we want. We want it to spread over the entirety of this. Yes, three months is a new badge, though. I think I said it for three months, six months, and I think three, six, nine in a year. I forget what all I set it for and take a look. Yay. I like how my channel is just so random. Like we do Breath of the Wild, we do VR. I also do woodworking. It's like just come here for a bit of everything. It's a variety show. Okay, so we got to carve all this away. Yeah. The Douglas fir here, I, it is aged a bit. So in woodworking, you want your woods to age quite a bit. Yep, oh nice. So woodwork, yeah, you want your woods to age just enough. So I live in Colorado where the ambient humidity is really low. Um, so the graphite shows the places that are too tall. Yes, it shows the places I got to carve. And then as you carve those high points down, everything starts settling down, and then eventually it'll all be a high point. Um, currently, I actually run humidifiers in my room, so it my room sits at about 60 to 50% humidity, which is pretty good. It's a little bit high for what I want, actually, but I'm comfortable with it. It's better than 20 to 30%. So the wood that I got, actually, for this, I have had for... How long has it been? I want to say three months, close to, I think since April. Yeah, two months or so, so it's not terribly aged, but I have let it sit for some time, so it has dried out a bit. And when I got it, it was a bit aged too, so that's nice. But the reason is because wood is a living thing. 
It's not like metals or whatnot. It will change and move with temperature and humidity. So you want to make sure that your wood dries out enough because trees use the wood to carry moisture from the roots to the leaves. And once you cut it, it keeps all that moisture in the wood. So you have to get rid of the moisture in the wood to be able to work with it. Otherwise, as it dries, it shrinks and it cracks. So you as a woodworker have to learn how to age wood. You have to learn how to cut wood. You have to learn how to fit wood, how to do all of this. Okay, we'll wiggle it a little bit more. And yep, so we're starting to get spots here. We're getting some spots here, all the way across here. This isn't as dark as I'd like it to be, but it's getting there. And we're also getting some spots down here. So yeah, it, it is spreading more. I need to add more graphite to it as well. Okay, let's open this back up. And this was a high point right there. Carve all of that away. Go very slow. Yeah, I'll show you my some of my instruments once I get this glued down. We can take a quick break. I can show you some that I built. And then we can work on... I don't know what I want to work on next. I got another base bar that I got to make. I got a top that I got to thin. So whatever you guys feel like. We could fit another base bar. Well, no, I can't really fit the base bar because I got to thin it. We can th we'll thin the top. I got the banjo too that I got to work on. Okay. There's that. So carve away all the dark points. Now let's add some of the graphite back here. And... Let's see, how did I hold this? This thing is so tiny, it's hard to hold on to. Yeah, I think it was like that. Okay. I think we've heard enough Animal Crossing. Um... I don't know what's a good one. I guess Skyrim. Skyrim music fits everything. Yeah. Just sprinkle a little more graphite all over this. Especially in the spots that have already been rubbing a bit. I want to make sure to replace the graphite there because as you rub it, it gets worn away, which means that it don't won't tell you if it's high again. So Sprinkle that there. That's pretty good. And, oh crap. Knocked a lot of my graphite away. It's still pretty much there though, so I, I can read it. So set you back there, and you go right about here. Yeah, to my eye already, it looks like a pretty tight fit. But I know it's not because it's not rubbing everywhere. Okay, so yeah, we got a big dark patch here, which tells me that we got a lot to take care of there and right here, so we got some work to do. So, hold it like this. And just scrape those away. Without removing too much wood. You cut too deep, then they become low points, and you have to come back down to them. Which is kind of frustrating here. Let me sharpen my pencil a little bit, too. Uh, do, 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 do. Sharpen this end so I can use this graphite. Normally, I just use a knife for this, but this gets me a much nicer graphite point to work with. Okay. Peel all that out of there. Perfect. Then let's replace you.
Sprinkle some more back all over this. Right up there. We're gonna have to clean all this up too, right before we glue it. Good, good, good. There. So let's line you all up again with that point there. And we wiggle it. Just a little bit, trying to keep it right where it's supposed to be, otherwise it'll give us false readings. Okay. We're getting there. Still got my high glue cooking over here. It's ready for whenever we're ready. And a little bit of a high point there, a little bit of a point there. This is the big one, though. Yeah, my camera may not pick it up the best, but the darker points you can tell are where it's pressing harder. Lighter points tells you that it's getting close, but it's not rubbing hard. Okay. There's that. And we'll set you there. Set you there. Um, no, I had that backwards. Hold on. That's why you mark it. Otherwise, it gives you a horrible reading. That nothing fits and it all needs to be redone. Okay, wiggle it a little bit. Okay, so yeah, we're starting to get... Like, all this entire length is getting marked now. And we got a little bit of a faint point here. So this part is still lower. But this whole part is getting pretty close to good now. So, hold it here. Curve all that. There. I'll leave the lighter points. Just try and take down the dark points. Um, I guess I could play every song on my stream deck really today. I don't know if there'd be time. I have probably a couple hours worth of music. So... Yeah, the satisfying thing about woodworking is that, like, once you're done, I will have a playable violin. Which is really, really something. Like, in today's day and age, you always think, oh, I need something, I just go to the store and buy it. But w with woodworking, like, the reason that I started building instruments was because I wanted to play instruments, but didn't have the money to, so I decided to just build it, because I wanted, I wanted to play it, but couldn't buy it, so... Like, you learn to build it, and then you realize that you can actually build a lot of the stuff you normally would buy, and it's just satisfying. Okay, this is actually a really decent fit here. I'm pretty happy with it. We got a, okay, we got a big gap over there that we got to take care of. So, if you look right here, you can see it's pretty close most of the way, except for right down here. There's a gap right at the bottom there. We'll have to take care of that. If we flip it around, you can see over here where it's all sitting. Okay, yeah, if you look at this end, that's a pretty good fit. I mean, there's some gaps here and there, but those will all get kind of taken care of. But yeah, this end right here I made way too low, so we're going to have to work on bringing everything down evenly so that way it comes down to this point without disrupting the angles and stuff we already have.
That's one lesson you learn really quickly in woodworking, is that you cannot add wood back. It's very easy to cut wood. It's very hard to stretch it. Okay. Right there. And let's line it all back up. Pass it again. Oh, it rakes a little bit. Okay, we'll go right about there. Plus two, there is actually a lot of theories and ideas for violin repair and building as a whole. So like there's some people that ascribe to the theory of springing their base bar, which means that they'll get it to fit evenly the whole way and then they'll slightly take down the ends. And then when they go to glue it up, they'll compress the base bar into the top and essentially turn it into a spring. Some believe that that makes their instrument sounds better. Others think it's a load of hogwash. Whereas others just try and fit it smoothly. Others have, I think also springing the bass bar, people say it's good for keeping an instrument lasting longer. Because over time, a violin will collapse under its own string weight. The strings actually ha are pretty heavy. You probably never thought about it, but if you play an instrument, like guitars for instance, six strings, I mean, yeah, they're under a bit of tension, but... If you actually look at the numbers, it's surprising because each string is on average, I want to say, what is it, 15 to 20 pounds of tension. So all str six strings ends up being 150 to 180 pounds of tension, which is quite a lot. About the, what is it, like average weight of a guy is what your guitar neck has to support every day that's strung up. And basses, those are, <laughs> the basses go up to 250 pounds of tension. Fiddles, I think, are more in the 50 to 60 pound range. 60 kilograms, I don't know what that translates to in freedom units. Okay, so yeah, we're getting marks all along here, and we're starting to get here, so I know that this low point here is starting to come down. Okay. Carving this. Go. Good, good, good. We're getting it. Oh, what do you guys think? Should I do more woodworking streams or is one one time good enough for you? That'd be down to do more stuff like this, if you are so interested. But I don't know if this is not as interesting as watching Breath of the Wild or Risk of Rain. That sits right about there. Okay, so even pressure, so that way we don't stretch out the top or bend it. Okay, let me check it. See where we're coming with this. I want to see how bad that gap still is. Yeah, it's still pretty bad. It's getting better. You like this variety? I might do more like this. I kind of enjoy it. And goodness knows I will always have more stuff to repair. There we go. Cut down all the high points. And fold that back up. But yeah, I'll have to re-glue the top to this. I have to actually re-glue the sides and the end block to it, so... I won't be closing it up today, but... Okay. 
Where? How did I get that gap? But when, when you get to see the instruments towards the end, um, should be pretty soon. Once I'm done with this base bar, I shall show them. Okay, we'll wiggle it a little bit more. We're getting really close, though. That gap is closing. I'm starting to run dry on graphite, which is okay. I'm trying to wear it away anyway. Okay. Close all that. Yeah, my microphone doesn't do the best with picking up instrument sounds. I'll turn off all sound effects, or not sound effects, but all audio filters so you guys can hear what they sound like pretty accurately, but it won't be perfect. Okay. There's all that. And let's do this again. Okay. And yeah, now it's yep, still there. Everywhere else is good to go. It's just a tiny gap right here that I gotta I gotta take everything down to. Which is frustrating. That's why you go slow. You don't rush in or go ham fisted with carving. Because you end up paying for it a lot later. Can I play every instrument I've built? Yes I can. I play a lot of instruments, because I got bored out in college and wanted something to do. So I learned instruments. Sadly, I don't have all the instruments that I've owned. I had to sell a couple, but yes, I have quite a few. Okay, let's keep carving that. There we go. Knows maybe if these streams take off in popularity, I might actually look into investing into a better camera for this. And the one I have works all right. Amazing, thanks. Yeah. Going to a Christian college, everybody played in, played the guitar there, so I learned guitar, and then I fell in love with playing instruments and decided to keep playing. Got bored of playing guitar, wanted a new sound. Um, yeah, we'll keep going here. Gap is still present, but it'll probably take a while to come down. Or knowing how this stuff actually ends up going. It'll, what'll probably happen is the gap that I'm trying to close right now, like it'll look big, it'll look big, it'll look big, and then all of a sudden it'll be closed in one one go. It's usually how it ends up going. Like you realize that there's one small part somewhere that's holding it. Okay. Yeah, I'll have to, I'll, hmm. it'll be a little bit hard to play songs because most of the songs I know will get copyright struck. Okay, outside top there, that goes right there. So, maybe only short snippets of some or a lot of short snippets, but yeah. Let's see, what else do I have? I haven't done Travers Town in a while. I think we are ready to glue. Okay, so everything is fit now. It all sits really well. So let me show you guys here. So I'm gonna leave it long for the glue up and then I'm going to come back and carve it down later once it's all dried and cured. So as you can see there, it sits really well. I know the lighting and stuff may not show it, but I'm pretty happy with that. So I got to clear up all the graphite that's here. Try and clear away some of this. Um, what do I got? I guess we can use eraser here. Cause I don't want to sand the wood to get rid of the graphite because that'll change the geometry and change the fit. Oh, accidentally hit two buttons. Off 
stuff on my hand. At least underneath the base bar, I don't want to change. Okay. So I got my high glue all cooked up here. Oh, that's nice and runny now. So. So that there, I need to grab some clamps real quick. mentioned earlier that high glue clamps itself which is really nice but if you have a glue job that like this that's more crucial like if you have a glue job like the base bar here which is going to support a lot of weight then you clamp it anyway you want to make sure that nothing goes wrong with this so we have our glue i got my clamps here one on my lap one right here I'm pretty sure, I want to make sure of this, but I'm pretty sure that I can just set this up here. And we can just do one clamp in the mid, well, maybe. Let's see here. One clamp in the middle, because I think our edges are tighter than the middle is. Okay, that'll go there. And... Okay, where was it? Yeah, I think our edges are tighter than our middle is, so one clamp right in the middle should be fine. So let's glue this up. We have to work fast because this glue sets when it cools. So we'll glob on a good bit. Don't want to go overboard with this just because you don't want tons of squeeze out to deal with. And apply all of our glue all the way along the surface. Now that it's all set up, set it right back down. Wiggle a little bit to spread glue evenly on all the surfaces. And we clamp it. Well, it's still hot. This is gluing up is the woodworker's most stressful point. This is where everything is either works out well or goes horribly wrong. There we go. I think we it worked out well. We got our wood clamped. We got the glue drying. So I'm gonna let that set for a little bit before I clean up any squeeze out. But yeah, we have now a bass bar fitted to the violin. So that'll take 24 hours to dry and then I can shape it and we can close the top for that. Anyway, I'm gonna show you guys some instruments. Um, let me close up my glue first though. I don't want this drying out too much. Clamp, yes. I don't need the other one. I'm good with the way I got it. Okay, try and melt the glue on my brush. The nice thing about hot glue is that you can just heat it up again and get all the excess glue off. And there's that. Hello, Kiki. And see how the clamp fit. I had one clamp in the middle. Let's see here. So let me grab some here to show you. Let 
we have a drink first. Um, I get. What do we start? I guess I'll start with my baby guitar. I have to tune this up, actually. Let me tune it, and then we'll go. Uh, do, 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 do. So, I need... No, I need... This. Got my pick right over here. Still pretty good, actually. Kind of off. Um, actually, no, this way. So I need the other tuning app. Yeah. While you're waiting, I'll run an ad real quick. Get it out of the way. Crashing, clashing with background music. Here, I'll mute the mic. Uh, yes, there was an ad. Subs don't see ads, though. Alright, stop the music. I think I'm all tuned up. Okay. Low string is buzzing for some reason. I don't know why. But this is my baby guitar. Let me put it in frame. I built this a while, a couple years ago, back in 2019, actually. I built this as a piccolo guitar because I had shoulder surgery, and I couldn't play a full-size guitar because I couldn't move my arm while I was in a sling. So I decided to build a tiny guitar so that I could play it while in a sling, and it worked out really well. So it's really hard to tell, but normally on guitars you have fret markers on it on the player side. So you'll have a marker on 3, 5, 7, 9, 12. Then I think that's pattern again. Back on 12 plus 3, 12 plus 5, 12 plus 7, so on and so forth. I decided not to go with that. Instead, I went with slightly different colored frets. So fret 1 and 2 are brass. 3 is silver. Camera's not picking it up at all, but yeah. I went with different colored frets instead of different colored or er, fret markers. So let me turn off the mic here. Get, it would pick up some background noise, unfortunately, but here, I'll, 
put it right next to the guitar and see what you guys think. I haven't played it in a while, but um, I'm trying to think if there's other, I don't know. I don't know many other songs that I could get away with playing for a guitar. Most of the songs I know are all classical hit, classic hits, which will get flagged immediately. see how much of a mess my room is. So this is my baby guitar that I built. It's one of the more recent guitars that I've got. Um, let me put this back. I'll grab a new one. Hold on. Let's see here. Uh, let's go with... Okay, let's go with this one instead. Yeah, that's a good guitar. picking me up right now. Um, shoot, that was kind of buried. I might, uh, yeah. See if I can just grab this one out of here. I'm trying to grab my mountain dulcimer. So this next one here is probably one that you've never seen before or one that you might have seen but you never knew about. This is called a mountain dulcimer and it mine has four strings and you play it on your lap and it's a really fun instrument, really quirky, not many people know about it. Um, let me make sure it's all tuned up here. Let's see. Should be pretty close. It's a little low, but that's okay.
So this, like I said, is designed to be played on your lap, and this is actually, from what I've heard, America's only instrument. The only instrument that is truly produced alone in America. Like, guitars came from other places, fiddles came from other places, the, the mountain dulcimer is America's instrument. We made it. So, it's got... I don't know if the mic's going to be able to pick it up, but it's got a really quiet but really pleasant tone to it. Here, let me turn the mic up a little bit. So yeah, it's got a really cool sound to it. Um, it is tuned, how is it, fifth and fourth apart, so you have, normally it's tuned to D, A, D, so this would be your D string, this would be your A string, and then you'd have two D strings to make sure that you get the high tone out. This instrument was one of the earlier ones that I made, and I built this all with uh, mostly only hand tools. I used a jigsaw to split the wood into the thickness that I needed, but I used a hand or yeah, hand plane to plane all the wood smooth, finished it by hand, glued it by hand, all of that, drilled the tuning pegs by hand, all of this. I this was one of my earlier ones, and I didn't have any tools at the time. I built this while I was out in college. And my roommate can attest the house smelled like wood sawdust every time he came home. But yeah, proud of this guy. Let me go grab a new one. Next instrument on the chopping block is one that is a couple years old at this point. Here we go. Next instrument on the chopping block is my five string banjo. So I built this one. I had power tools when I made this, so it's a little bit nicer than some of my others. Uh, let's tune it up a little bit. But yeah. I built this because I wanted to play banjo. So, let's tune it up. Um, so normally banjos are tuned to D, G, D, B, D. So an open G chord. But mine I made a little bit longer so I gotta tune it a little bit lower. We'll 
take this down to double C though. Oops, shut up. Yeah, I learned to play banjo years ago, but there's a couple different ways to play banjo. Play a little bluegrass. Hopefully, none of the strings snap. probably if I end up playing poorly enough that no one will actually recognize the song. didn't sound like just pure noise. the banjo one of the banjos i built there's a lot of other instruments i might show them off at a later point but i kind of want to get back to building instruments now so let me set everything back up here turn the mic back down so i don't peek it always there we go all right so where is it uh Yeah, we'll do the banjo room next. Okay, let me sweep up some of this. And I shall get my next instrument I want to work on. Let's fold up the towel, keep all the wood shavings inside. And let's turn the camera back down here. There.
There we go, next project. So this, to the untrained eye, looks like embroidery hoops. But to me, this is a banjo ramp. So there's a couple problems that I'm having with this. For one thing, you can tell right here that this piece right here is split apart, so I need to re-glue that. And this, some of these blocks are not rounded. I need this to be rounded. I'll do that on my own on the bandsaw. But I need to re-glue this piece especially, and I need to level all the blocks so that they sit flush to each other. Okay, let me set all the other parts out of the way. But we'll go at this one here. So let's figure out how it's supposed to sit. There's a particular way it wants to, or if any way of good it looks like it wants to go like this yeah it looks like this is the way the glue lines line up the best so i what did i glue? i think this is high glue let me test this real quick i think i originally glued this with high glue which means i'm in a good spot yeah that's high glue Okay, this is the other reason I use high glue, is that because I have to re-glue this, normally in woodworking, if you have to re-glue something, you have to clean out all of the old glue and reapply glue, because glue does not stick to glue. However, with high glue, high glue just don't care. High glue stick to everything. Okay. So, let me get everything all set up. Make sure there's no grit under the glue joint there. And let me reheat up my brush. Because there was a little bit of glue in my brush when I set it down on the edge, it stiffens up a little bit, so I have to heat it up in the glue to get all those fibers going again. This is just like a cheap Crayola brush. Whatever I could find cheap at the store at the time. So we'll take some glue, make sure we don't get any drips, put it on kind of thick on this end. Yeah, we got a little dribble on the desk, that's fine. High glue also cleans off well. There's a lot of upsides to it, you just have to get over working with it. It's hard to work with because you have to work it hot. If you don't work it hot, then you're screwed. Okay, so then we set this down here and squeeze the parts together, rub them a little bit. Rubbing also, aside from evenly applying the glue, also creates a tiny vacuum that helps clamp the wood. Okay, so now we just pull it together here. I need to give the glue time to set. At least start curing here. And, yeah, that's starting to loop a little bit. Yeah, this will be, so in my banjos, there's two ways you can do band. Well, there's not two, there's, okay. There are two overarching ways to do banjos. You can have a block rim construction, which this one is here. You can see the rims made up of individual blocks and there's laminated. I don't have a laminated banjo, so I can't show you, but that's where you take thin strips of wood and bend them around to form and glue some of those thin strips together into a banjo rim. So that's the two main ways of building a banjo, but then inside of that, there's a subset where normally you want to use shoes on a banjo rim, which you probably have no idea what I'm talking about, but if you think of a banjo rim or look up a banjo rim at all, you will see that there are tiny hooks all around the rim that clamp over top of the rim. I can actually show you on this one here. So on this instrument, you can see that there are hooks all around it. And the hooks latch over top of this silver ring right here. This ring is called the tension hoop, and the hooks pull it down to pull the banjo head tight because it's just a drum head. So there's two ways of actually attaching those hooks to the rim. Normally it's done by a metal bracket on the end of each hook here. 
The way I do it, just to save a little bit of money, is I actually have this wood flange here. It adds a little bit of weight to the banjo, but you use the wood flange to actually hold the hooks down instead of the shoes. You can kind of make it aesthetic too. You can do some carving on the wood flange as well, make it all purdy. Okay, so that's gluing up there. Um. Okay, there is that. Let it sit for a minute more, then I'm going to tape it down and use the tape as a clamp. I'll actually pull out the tape. The room is such a mess. Got some tape. Here's my clamp. I know, it's high dollar, high tech. It's the fanciest clamp, clamp in the world. So, pull a little bit. Try and scrape off some of this high glue here. As it starts cooling, it starts gelling before it fully cures into a hard thing. So while it's gelling, you can actually t just take your finger or stick or something and rub the glue and it'll peel right off. Kind of like all those gummy seals that they use in all the advertisement papers and flyers that they send out. Okay, so let me tape this down. Apply a little bit of tension in the tape. Not tons, because too much tension actually makes this tape just peel up. It's not strong, but just enough to try and hold it in place. Okay, attach that there. I guess if I wanted to, I could also staple the tape, but that's kind of overkill. There we go, and then we flip it over. Yeah, the glue's already curing quite a bit. It's not perfectly dry yet. It's got, it'll probably take 24 hours to fully dry, but it's getting to the point where it's holding enough that I can start handling it. Whereas with tight bond, I have to leave it clamped for 30 minutes before I can start touching it. Okay. And just like that, banjo rim is clamped. So the banjo rim has been repaired. I need to start leveling it though. Because, here I'll show you. Let me get this out of the way. Um, I'm running out of space to set this up. Here we go. So here's the rest of the pieces. So whenever you have the banjo rim, when you have a block rim like this, each ring is going to sit on the ring below it. And if one piece is unevenly glued, like it just sits a little bit proud or something, then that's gonna create gaps in the ring. Uh, right there, you can kind of see a gap. So I need to level all of this. Make sure each one of these joints here is smooth and flush. So that way the ring above will sit nicely in it. That's my completed ring. We'll set that off to the side. Here's another one that we gotta do. And let's start carving. Not gonna catch the sawdust on this one. Screw it. But yeah, this ring I made out of walnut. So walnut is a nice tone wood. I haven't even gotten into tone woods. I haven't nerded out enough yet. But yeah, I don't know. I'll go into tone woods if you want me to, but that'll be probably a half hour discussion. So I'll leave that up to you. If you just want me to talk about carving wood, I can do that. But if you want me to talk about what's all behind it, then I can do that. Okay. 
It's one of the reasons why I like this big chisel so much. I can use it kind of like a plane. I can keep one spot flat and just pivot the rest of it, and it planes everything for me. AFK for a bit. Also, nice word. Thanks. That's all right. Do what you gotta. Okay. Let's carve here. I know I'm aiming the blade at my hand a little bit, but I'm pushing with my thumb away. So I'm not really pushing with this hand. I'm just getting it started and making sure that there's forward momentum. I'm guiding it with my thumb so I won't cut myself. Otherwise, if you are new to woodworking, do not do this. It's very easy for your thumb to slip off. And then you got a chisel on the side of your hand. Then you gotta explain to the doctors why there's a chisel on the side of your hand, and then they gotta remove it. Not fun. Okay, that. Alright, I need my rasp file for this one. So I've got two files, actually. I'm sure this will get some giggles, but please nerd out. Alright, I will nerd out later. So this is my rasp file. This is a very rough file. Um, you can't really see it, but the teeth on it are tall, they're sharp, and they're wide. So they cut a lot of wood, but as a result of that, they leave a rough surface. This is the next step up from that. This is, I know this is gonna cause people to laugh. This is a flat bastard file. So the original name for it, why it's called that, is because there is, originally was a rough file and there was a finishing file. So you had like a high-end file and a low-end file for removing wood, but they wanted a middle file. So they came up with this file heel here in, I forget when it happened. It was like 1800s or something, 1700s or whenever they did it. But back then, the word bastard actually meant a illegitimate child of two parents, usually a high, like a high society parent and a low society parent. So this file, they took that word and they put it onto this file because it's a mix between the high grade file and the low grade file. So that's why it's named that. So there you go. There's your nerd. There's some nerding out. But yeah, we'll nerd out about tone wood now. So tone wood is a, you could honestly have an entire TED Talk series on its own. But tone wood is essentially wood that vibrates that creates tone is all that it is. So different woods create different tones. For instance, walnut here creates a very mellow tone. So it emphasizes the lower end of notes, the low end of frequencies, and it also really warms them up. Whereas a wood like maple emphasizes more the high end of and sharpens them and harshens them quite a bit. So, walnut here is, I'm going to use this for a long neck five string banjo. So you saw my regular banjo. A long neck is longer than that and designed to create even lower tones. So I decided to go with walnut because it'll give me good low tones for it and help warm up those low tones, which I'm already working towards with the long neck. grab a drink here but banjos normally are made out of a couple of different woods normally they're made out of maple um mahogany is also pretty standard walnut is the third one but not as common so walnut is good for more plunky sounding banjos more country, folk sounding, not necessarily that bluegrass, fast picking stuff. Um, so 
I, yeah, I'm going with black walnut because it'll give me a nice low tone. But also within walnut, there's also different variations because there's not just a walnut tree. There's different types of walnut trees. So this, I believe, is black walnut, which is the standard walnut that you'll see. Mostly grows in Georgia, especially because of the walnut seeds that they can harvest for food, um, but also grows up north some. It's good for instruments, but there's also another type of walnut called Peruvian walnut. That one has different tonal characteristics in in the walnut class, so it'll still give a nice low warm sound to stuff, but it gives I forget what Peruvian does. I think it's more clear sounding. So it's still warm and mellow, but it's slightly clearer than wal regular black walnut. Then you have other, there's Clara Walnut also, and there's Bastonia Walnut, which are different mixes. Bastonia is actually a hybrid that does not exist in nature. We created it. So there's a lot of different walnuts out there, and then there's different tonal characteristics from board to board. So you can get like a good bit of walnut that rings tree, true and clear like all day long. And then there's other walnut out there that just sounds like knocking on a door whenever you try and get a tone out of it. So there's different different sounds you can get out of the same black walnut tree. There's different sounds between walnut tree to walnut tree. There's different tones you can get from different types of walnut trees. There's so much in this. And like as a woodworker and instrument builder, you have to know all of these, like what woods would work best for what and why and stuff. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this. Probably have to take some sandpaper to that, but that ends pretty smooth. Okay, we got a little bit of a rough spot here. But yeah, Cone Woods is a huge, huge area of study. I mean, people devote their entire lives just to tone wood. Because there's so many little things that matter. Like, for instance, violin makers, when they try and make the best violin that, that... Well, not the best, but some good violin makers out there, they will specifically state that they want trees that grow on the western side of the mountain, harvested at nighttime. And I'm not joking. Like, people are that picky about wood because it all makes a difference. They want the western side of mountains or whatever the rain side, the non-rainy side of mountains is because that makes for a hardier tree. It grows slower, so the wood is denser. Um, then they want harvested at nighttime, I believe, because they want... If it's harvested at nighttime, the tree's not flowing with sap at the time, which means it takes less time to dry out. It's going to be more stable. So, yeah, I mean, you can just go to the store and pick up a board of cedar if you want and run with that. I've done that for tops, but like on the high dollar ones, people will pay hundreds of dollars, if not like several thousands for the right top of the instrument. That has the perfect grain, the perfect sound, right density, right stiffness. All the way up to that. And then there's just me, just gets a board from the hardware store. But hey, if you can get a board from the hardware store to sound good, then I mean, go for it. Which I have done a lot. Grasping this down. Well, this is a file. Keep filing this down level. I'm not going to glue up the rim today. Glue the, all the segments of the rim together. Just because I have to round them all over. And I have to do that on my bandsaw, which you guys can't see because it's actually tucked away right now on my bench. I could stream it from my phone, but eh. We've already been going two hours. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'll level all the rim here. And then I will 
probably call the stream. I do enjoy this. I might come back and do this again. I don't know. We'll see how well it does. I know it's uh I know it's pretty far outside of what I normally do, but I do enjoy it. I just I don't know. I love nerding out about wood because I've learned so much about it. We're back, welcome back. Missed our discussion about tone wood and trees and how picky people can be about the particular boards that they want. Okay. Yeah, I'm still leveling all of this out. Yeah, I'm, as I was saying too, I might do this as a stream again. Who knows if, because there's the fiddle that I glued the base bar onto. You guys might be interested in closing that up. I don't know. If you'd want to see that brought to completion and strung up and played, I could do that. Okay. Yeah, this is still pretty high here. Or this banjo too. I think I have a neck. I have a neck built for this somewhere, but I don't know where it went. Um, I, yeah, I have no idea. I have no idea where the neck of this. Been listening to this song all day to the Zelda theory. It is a good song. The Kakariko is saved theme. I think that's actually what it's called. Because there's a Kakariko theme from Twilight Princess, and then there's a Kakariko is saved. Okay, let's clean out the file a little bit. Get some of this dust out of there. Who knows, we could even turn this into a woodworking Wednesday stream. Okay, that feels pretty good. That all feels pretty good, I think. Other than I'll have to do fine adjustments when I have all the blocks, all the rim segments ready to go. I'm not going to level them all perfectly until I have them cut to where I want them to be. Oof, this one is bad. Let's see if I can show you. Right there. That's nasty. I don't know how that happened. Blame the, blame the apprentice. I don't have an apprentice, but we'll blame him anyway. Okay. Let's cut all this away. Cat's walking around down there. He might you might see him hop up onto my lap. And there we go. That's pretty good. Yeah, I'll have to sand that plane it still. I'm just trying to round over the edges. Actually, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I'll take off all the sharp corners. So that way when I take it to the bandsaw, I can, there's nothing that'll catch. Yeah, I do have another fiddle. I could work on that too today. I don't know how long I want to stream. That. There we go. Round over that bump. This one. This one just needs a file, really. Clean out the dust. That way it cuts better. Because files are cutting tools. They are not just scraping or rubbing. They are cutting, actually. And the way you sharpen a file, or a rasp especially, I think files can be sh sharpened this way, but I'm not sure. Drop it in a bucket of vinegar. The acid will eat away the teeth on it, the rounded over teeth, and sharpen them for you. There you go. There's your pro tip for the day. And let's keep doing that. Yeah. I mean, what would you guys do? All you, all my viewers out there just sitting at home, 
surrounded by their piles of files, just no idea what to do. That's why y'all come here. That and occasionally laugh at something. Okay, that looks good. That feels good. Run you over a little bit. Yeah, yeah, we can follow that. That's okay. Okay, this one I think is pretty good to go. Yeah, that's good. We'll flip it. Yeah, you can see where I've glued it before. Thanks for the file info. Yeah. The rest of it especially. Files I'm not as sure on. I think you can do it too, but it might not be as good for them. Okay. Yeah, this banjo rim here I actually brought with me when I moved out to where I am now. Out to Colorado. So it survived a trip for 1,300 miles and over a mile in elevation. Um, what do we got? Did I mean message? <laughs> Didn't mean, oh, because, okay. That's all right. Uh, actually, that's a bit too much. Okay, we need chill music for woodworking. Okay, try and break away some of that glue. A uh, difference between file and rasp. A rasp is a very aggressive file. So this is a rasp here. You can see the teeth are very huge, really. You can see them all. If you wanted, you could count them. They're very sharp, and they stand very proud of the wood. They're designed to cut deep. Whereas this is a file here. The teeth are a lot closer together. They're a lot lower, and there's a lot more of them. So no one tooth cuts deep, but they all take a little bit away. Whereas this, like, each tooth cuts pretty deep. Grasps are more for shaping, the initial shaping. Files are more for the smoothing. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with this, I think. I think this will bandsaw pretty well. And let me measure this guy, actually. So I already cut this one on the band, so I want to make sure... I want to see what size rim I have. Let's see. Is it 12 inches? I think it is. The hair under. Is it 12? Okay. Right on the edge. 11 and 7 eighths? Interesting. Yeah. There's a lot of different tools you can use for woodworking. Okay. One. Yeah, that kind of needs to be right about there. Okay, it's a little bit uneven here. I wish I had a lathe, but I don't. Plus, I'm sure my apartment manager would not love me spinning a lathe in my room. But here, we can use this one to mark out the other got to try and line up every line possible. Playing SO2 with friends. Nice. Uh, let's try and center this as much as possible. There, that looks pretty good. Ah, crap. This is where super glue comes in handy. You can just put a couple drops of super glue down and it'll hold your wood for you. You have that in there. Actually, let me rotate it. It's not a true circle. I'm sure I'll blame on the wood movement. That looks pretty sensitive there. It was fun. Oh, nice. Okay, pin that down. Then, scribe our circle all the way around it. Yeah, close enough. I kind of moved it a little bit before I finished. 
Um, do, 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 do. Okay, that goes right about there. Okay. Try and recenter this back in the slot it was in. Okay, there we go. We now have another circle to cut on the bandsaw. So yeah, I'm gonna have to try and figure out how I'm gonna do this. I may have to get shoes for this one. Yeah, I think I will have to. I don't think I have a good room. Unless I have another, I might have another layer somewhere that I'll have to find. I think I do have another layer, maybe. I don't know. Okay, so yeah, this one is ready to cut on the bandsaw, so I'll do that, and then I might, if we do a woodworking stream again, I will show you guys that we'll be gluing the rims up. Happy with where those are now. Okay, that's all good there. And let's see what time is it. 3.12. Yeah, we could. Could show you the... I have to find the chisel. Yeah, I think I can. Let me see if I can find my chisel. On my gouge, really, is what I need. Let's see. So I have another fiddle top that I've started, actually. Another whole fiddle. I need to make sure it's thin enough. So here's the top that I've built. I've got going. So here's the neck of the fiddle that I'm building. And you might notice that it has five holes right up here. That is because I'm actually building a five string violin for this. So I've built one before, but this will be another one that I built that I'm looking to build that I well the first one I built was the actually the first violin I ever built. So it plays sounds, it makes sounds, but it's not great. So I'm trying to actually build a nicer one. So I'm working on this. I need to make sure that the top and back are thinned correctly. So I got my calipers here. Another high-tech tool right there. Best money can buy. And I need my I don't know where I put it though. That's a fancy fiddle. Okay, here's one of my gouges. That one's pretty dull though. That one also dulls pretty quick. Do I sell instruments? Um, not yet. So all the ones that I built, I mainly build for myself to try and better myself so that way I can eventually get to the point of selling. There's flaws and stuff that I can see in the instruments I've built, so I want to iron those all out before I start charging people for it. So yeah, that's where I'm at. Yeah, I mean, I could sell them now. It's probably me more nitpicking details than anything, but I want to make sure they're perfect before I charge money. Okay. Got my other gouge. 
So let's do this. The song ran out. Uh, we got an ad about to start soon. Let's see. So I'm going to have to mark out the thicknesses that I want. This is quite the energetic wood carving song. Okay, let me move my big chisel out of the way because I don't need this right now. Try and clean off my desk. Don't need that. So, top thickness. I think I'm pretty close. I think I measured it before. I want to double check and see how it's settling. So, we have top thickness. I have the cheat sheet up on my top monitor so I can see everything. So, edges should be four to four and a half. We'll keep it towards the bigger side. Because this is actually cedar. So normally I mentioned earlier that you want to build fiddles out. People use spruce for the tops. I am building mine out of cedar because it's what I got. And this is actually an experimental violin. If you look really closely, you can actually see the alternating grain lines. Like for instance, down here, you can see everything curving this way. But then right here, you can see it all curved this way. This was actually an experiment to see what would happen if I glued up, I think it's like eight strips side by side by side. I tried quarter, I tried book matching all of them so that I could actually make the top. I think the wood that I had wasn't thick enough or wasn't wide enough so I ended up doing this to get the width that I needed. Uh, what is the song? Rooftop Run from Sanic. So. This is my experiment of a fiddle to see what happens. So the edges, I want 4.5. Around the F holes, I want three. Right? Top thickness, yes, three. And then around the sound post, so it should be all three in the middle here. And then it slopes to, okay, it should be five in the corner. Cool violin, thanks. It's the start of a blank. It's more the size of a viola, but for a five string, I want it to be a bit longer. The F holes need a lot of cleaning up, but I'm pretty happy with it. So let's measure what the actual thing is. So I actually made these calipers. You can make them at home too, if you want to. They're easy. So this tells me exactly what thickness I have. And Let's go right in there. We have, what are you? It is six. Okay. So we're currently at six in the middle. So we have to take down the whole center here by half. Um, edges feel kind of thinner. So I wonder what those are going to be. Um, doo -doo -doo. okay, those are all, those look to be four. So those are good. Yeah, it looks like only the center I need to thin out a little bit. So we shall do that when we rotate everything. <laughs> Exclamation point up. Ah, there it goes. How long have I been live? Almost three hours. Okay, that's not bad. So we'll use my little plane for this. Since we don't have tons of material to remove, I'll just plane it. And you. Epic wood carving music. Yeah, actually no, I'll use my gouge here. Okay, I can't carve that way. Wood's telling me no. Got to listen to your wood. Um, what happened? Oh, this one. Love this song. 
Yeah, the wisdom was a whole bunch of funny quotes that I found online. There's some dad jokes in there. There's some weird ones. All kinds of funny stuff. Okay. We'll use the plane to even it out. A little bit of chatter there, but that's okay. Um, actually, it is a friend with Zelda info. Ooh. Interesting. A friend with Breath of the Wild 2 release date would be better than a friend with chocolate. Changed my mind. <laughs> yeah, that's your favorite. <laughs> Too open-minded yet. I heard that one a long time ago. Okay, I need to lower the blade a little bit on this. Just a smidge, a smidge. Yeah, that was... I think that was a joke my grandparents used to say. And let's keep the car over here. You only have to remove three millimeters, which isn't tons. Yeah. In woodworking, you gotta be a master of both the metric scale and the freedom unit scale. That's all right. <laughs> so let's. Keep carving this. Yeah, you can re easily remove about one millimeter just with one swipe of the chisel. Ah, it didn't connect. No, oh, that's a new one. Nightbot glitched out, apparently. Because the way that that command works is it actually reads from a document, a pastebin that I set up. That just has a bunch of quotes on it. Yeah. Should be pretty close now, I think. That feels pretty thin. All right. Another lesson in woodworking. You got to really listen to the wood, too, which I've already said, but listen to how it rings. So we'll hold it right here, close to the mic so you can hear. But if you listen for it, you can kind of hear it ring. Where is it? I know there's like one. And how you hold it, too, also changes it. We can hear different tones. <laughs> yeah, ding a gin. It's a not fun office quote. But yeah, listen to the wood ringing. As you carve it thinner, you can hear it ring more. So, it's pretty good. I have to measure how. Especially on, let me see if I can show you here. Especially on guitar tops, those things ring like bells if you do it right. Where to another piece of wood? Sure. Um, we have a guitar top here that I showed off earlier. It's kind of off camera. It's the one that I glued. This guy. So we're going to ring it next to the mic here. Tapping right on the bridge plate. Um, is it picking it up? As a instrument builder, you're listening for that ring and you're trying to bring it out of the wood. So it's all about trying to... Let's see here. Find another song. Yeah, it's all about trying to find that ring and trying to bring it out of the wood. Um, Let's measure this now. Okay, that's looking better. I don't think we're at three millimeters yet, but we should be getting closer. Uh, ruler I put over here. And <laughs> now I go to work. Hurry up. Okay, what are we at? 
Well, actually, no, we're right on the money. I'm a little bit thin. No, we're actually right at three. Ha! I did it. Okay, I'll use my plane and we'll even this out a little bit. But yeah, we can add the base bar to this guy too. I don't know if I have time to do that today. Okay, but yeah, this fiddle top is all set to go. Oh uh, yeah, there's quite a, I think it's a 20 second cooldown. Stuck at 37%, ah, right, rip. Okay, we'll even this out some more. Let's see what I'm at. Ah, dang it. <laughs> uh, bot's working. I think it's, I think there's a user cooldown for it. Oh, you got a goal. Congrats. That's actually really hard to do. Okay. Uh, let's keep chiseling this away. Trying to smooth this all out. Oh, it's not. Why is it not working for you? It might have a cooldown if you do it too much. I don't set one, but maybe there's one hard coded in. Okay. So, I'm pretty happy with this top. I'm gonna have to smooth it some more. Oh, wisdom works. Okay, let me carve this a little bit. Okay, we'll come at it from this way. Wood saying it doesn't want to be carved that way. Gotta come from this direction. Actually, no, this is kind of splintery edge here. I'm not a fan of this. Gotta come perpendicular, I guess. Oop, you slap me. Hey. Okay, I mean, ah, that's a little thick right here. We'll take down the F-hole a little bit, too. Keep whittling away right at this. So there's also some thought, too, for fiddle tops of where you want to thin more to get the vibrations. Because there's nodes. Um, I don't have a video handy, but actually, if you induce vibrations into the top at certain frequencies the whole plate will move in a predictable pattern like i think i forget which frequency it is but one frequency will actually create an x pattern in dust that you put on it okay the benefit of growing up with siblings that you become good at fractions yes you do you become very good at splitting everything making sure it's all even Tricking you over siblings hit. Yeah. <laughs> that or splitting everything evenly. Because you have to make sure that they don't get more than you do. Or they make sure you don't get more than they do. I think I added like 40 quotes to that wisdom thing. So you could go for a while before you start getting starts before you see them all. Okay, so I'm trying to thin down the F hole a little bit here, the wing of it. You're an oldest child. Nice. Yeah, but I'm trying to thin down the wing of the F hole here, just so that it vibrates a little bit more and adds to the frequencies. I don't know how thin I want to take it, so I'm. my plan is to actually finish the instrument, but leave it unfinished. In it, like close up the instrument, but leave it unfinished so that way when I can I can play it, hear it, and make tweaks as needed. I have no idea what I'm doing with those tweaks, but I can make them. Okay, we'll carve all that down. That looks all good there. Sometimes it gives you diabetes. Rip Wilford Brimley. 
this feels pretty good. It feels pretty stiff. It does wiggle a little bit, but it returns to its shape. And do another tap test here. You guys, you can listen into. It's still a little plunky. It's not ringing as much as I'd like it to. Maybe if I can hold it right here. And we're getting more vibrations there. You can kind of hear the low ends coming out. The high ends aren't defined yet though. Can't stop with chocolate. Chocolate is best. Yeah, the high ends. Where is it? El Turtle Fox Gamer, how's it going? <laughs> Listening to me tap a violin top into a microphone. This is such gripping content here. So yeah. Um. Yeah, I can thin down the edges a little bit. I'm trying to think. I think the high. I'm trying to remember where the high tones have come from. I have. Hmm. I think it's more the thinner areas. Let's see. Oop, we got two songs going over top of each other. It's cool how the sound changes. Yeah. Little changes into the wood, how you carve it, really affect the sound. Let's see. So yeah, I'm gonna have to... I think I'm gonna have to come more at the top, too. I'm not gonna add purfling to this because I don't have any purfling to add. I could try inking it in, but yeah. Maybe someday I will. Oh, yes. This is the fresh cut cedar smell. I love it. Um. Yeah, I'm happy where this is. I'm gonna have to fit the base bar. I'm gonna have to sand this. Which sanding would be really noisy in the mic, so I don't think I can do that. Um, but yeah. the back though, I think I did thin to where I want it to be. Maybe it's still thick. Let's check this. How thick is the back? The back is mongo thick. Oh, said cedar is dangerous in huge doses. Yes, the smell of cedar actually comes from the acid in the wood, and the acid actually is dangerous for your lungs. <laughs> it has a Says that too. Keeps hitting spacebar. Still on Earth. That. Hey, what are we at? Oh yeah, we're over. <laughs> we're over a centimeter thick. That's bad. So normally for the back thickness, you want it to be where did I put that? Back thickness for the center of it, you want it to be at 4.5. I am currently at 11. <laughs> So I'm a little thick here. I need to I need to take a lot of wood down. Um I guess we shall go at it. Nothing to it but to just get down and do it. That was a bad rhyme. Came up with it on the spot. I regret saying it. Okay, but this back here is actually Osage Orange. Four and a half millimeters, yes. You're trying to get the back to four and a half millimeters thick. I'm currently at 11 millimeters. But the back here is Osage Orange. The camera isn't picking it up well, but when it's fresh cut, it's actually the color of mac and cheese, which I'm not joking. Uh, for real friends don't get offended when you insult them, they smile and call you something even more offensive. Yep, it is true, but yeah. I'm making the back of this fiddle out of Osage Orange, and when you fresh cut it, it looks like mac and cheese color. Not that craft stuff, like the generic stuff that doesn't add color in it. It's such a cool color, and put it, put it under a clear finish, it's gonna be nice. So, let's get at it. <laughs> mac and cheese wood, yep. Doesn't taste like mac and cheese, though. Don't eat it. Sincerely, someone who knows better now. Mac and cheese. Mac and cheese is good. I like mac and cheese. Okay. Um. Hmm. I'm trying to think of how best to carve this without cutting my hand. Since it's such an odd shape, it's kind of hard. 
Uh, let's see. I guess I could come at it kind of like this. Because there's not really a good way to brace it on the top here, on the bench. So I kind of got to brace it against my gut and legs. And carve it this way. And let's keep carving this. Let's see. Oh, wrong song. I think there... Oh, yeah, there's also exclamation point sad. If you want to see what videos it can pull up for you. Pull up random YouTube videos. Not random. I coded them in, but... Come on. <laughs> Got the sarcastic comment one again? Nice. Okay, so, yeah, I'm going to try and bring down the center of this, and then I'll slope everything into it. <laughs> Chandler, yes. It is indeed a friend's reference. I gotta say, trying to carve this while in a rocking chair that rocks is not great. Like, as you're pushing into the wood, you're just slowly rocking away from it. Kind of makes your life harder. Let's lock that down so we don't fly away from our wood. Yeah, I kind of want to do this again. I like this. It's chill. It's fun. It's a nice break from video games. My file. Hog indeed. Yeah, yeah, it's starting to come down. It feels a little bit thinner now. Got glue on my thumb though. And yeah, the easiest way to do this that I've found is actually to use a drill press. You can set up a drill press so that when it comes down, there's a pin underneath it so that you sandwich the wood in between and it stops the drill press right at the right thickness. And then that tells you exactly how far to carve. Okay. Let's uh, see. Yeah, this is going to take me a while. Yeah, well, I'll probably have to do this off camera. <laughs> Slap Nightbot with a herring. Nightbot is sad. But yeah, we got got quite a bit done. We got the top thinned here. We got the back thinned a little bit on this. We got some banjo rings shaped a little bit. We got a base bar fitted to the fiddle. We got a patch, the edge patched on the bit or on my five string bass guitar acoustic thing. Yeah, I really enjoy this. I. I do want to come back and do this again. I don't know when I'm going to do it. You have 4K channel points. Ooh. You can spend it on stuff. You could laugh at me four times. But yeah, I want to come back and do this at some point. I also want to do some more whatever. Do some predictions too. Um, yeah. No, no I don't feel like doing marbles today. I want to do some more predictions. Um, but yeah, we'll have to, I'll probably wait till we get more people in chat for predictions. That way we get more people in the pot, but yeah, I guess this has been your little window into the world of instrument building. It's messy, it's dirty, and it's a lot of fun. It's very precise and you deal with the sharp tools a lot too. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you learned a little bit and hopefully you got to chill a little bit with some good music. And we will be playing video games like a lot. I'm glad you did. We'll be back to video games on Friday. I don't know what yet. I'll have to figure that out. I've done VR a lot recently, so I'm kind of VR'd out for the moment. We might do Death Road to Canada. I added in a lot of characters. So we could come back for that. Could see if we could get you guys to the end again. We could have other characters come in. But that's about all I got for this stream. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day and take care.